Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and it is Tutorial Tuesday. Right, last week I did an Alina Craft Design Team haul and one of the biggest responses I got was how on earth do we use these? Well, on Alina's channel she's actually shown you these are letter press dies which can also be used as stamps which means you can colour them. Now on Alina's channel she's used an ink pad and a brayer and yes you can of course use those and I have those myself but sometimes I can be a bit lazy and I want to be a bit quick and I really don't want the mess so what do I do? So I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to letter press without a mess. Now this can be used on something like this. I wouldn't recommend it for letter pressing words unless you've got a seriously good eraser to remove any excess. And this is what we're going to use. And I've got so much stuff on my table today that I'm just digging things out. Right. This is graphite carbon copy paper. This is grey and this one is white. These are from Joann's. Now, these are around five bucks a pack and you get, I think it's, I've got the package here. I think you get like a 30 inch square or something like that. So it is quite expensive and it's by Royal and Langnickel. Now Walmart used to do this, but I couldn't find any. So I was really lucky uh, to grab some in Joann's on AliExpress. You'll get 150 sheets for five bucks but then you've got to wait for it to arrive. There it is. It's one sheet and it's 18 inches by 36. So if you can find it, uh, congratulations. And if you can find it in white, even greater congratulations. But I did find both and they were the last packets in Joanne. Right. So what do we do with copy paper? Well, usually we put it down on a sheet of cardstock and we'll draw or we'll trace and it will transfer. But when you uh, put it under pressure with something like this, I used to use it with my embossing folders to create a really sort of industrial steampunky type effect. And if I've got time at the end and I'm not overrunning my clock, um, I'll certainly run an embossing folder through and show you. But that's how I would choose to do these with maximum amount of efficiency and no mess. So I actually cut the two Santas and did those. Now, this is the graphite paper that I have left. I could, if I wanted to, run that through uh, with a couple of sheets of cardstock on top to pad them out. And I'd be left with a very grungy, distressed outline in grey. And all of this bit you see here would be white. It's exactly the same as foiling. You just get the reverse of your images there. So I cut two and I did do the Santas and then you end up with an outline, you see, that you can see and that you can colour. So it just makes life super, super easy. And I did my Santas with my Touch 5 markers and the Santa bag is outlined with a white gel pen, as is the boots. But because I've already done these and coloured them, I've decided I'm going to do another Santa. But this time we're going to try and cold foil the outline of it. So that's what I'm going to be doing with Santa again. But that's what you get with your graphite paper. It will cleanly and very quickly just press and stamp the outline. Now if you've bought dies in the past, you know paper piecing dies and sometimes to be honest there are a few sellers that don't quite know how to do them and so what you end up with is this incredibly detailed die which looks absolutely awesome 
but you'll run it through, you'll get the embossed outline, and then I know some people will panic and think, how on earth do I colour that in and make it look tidy? Well, you use graphite paper, that's how you make it look tidy, and then it's like someone stamped, embossed, and cut that image for you. So get yourself some graphite paper, and then you don't have to hide those dies anymore. You can drag them out and use them. So there are two Santas showing you that way but I'm going to do the flower and I'm going to do the flower in the graphite which is the grey this is quite literally pencil on a sheet of paper and it's your shiny side that will go down so that you've got this like frosty matte side facing you and then you'll put your embossing piece down you run that through take this paper off and then cut your shape and colour it however you want to colour it. So we're going to do the flower, I'm going to do that and we're going to colour it and then I'm going to show you how it looks with the white graphite paper and you can see that shiny, flip that over and that is frosty. So we're going to do it in white onto black and then I'm going to use some Perlex or mica powders if you've got the perfect pearls, it's exactly the same thing. I just use a makeup brush that I got from Dollar Tree. These come in palettes and you can use the makeup as well if you want to, just like Perlex, if it's got enough mica powder in it. So we're going to do black with the Perlex. And as I just said, we're going to do Santa. And we're going to do him with by embossing... I'm going to use a sticky embossing powder. I'm going to use um, an embossing pad so that what's left should be a sticky outline once I've heated it. And then I'm going to go over it with some foil that I've had in my stash for years and see if we can't get a foiled outline of Santa. Right, so last week I showed you just plain embossing and cutting into gold foil, which is something I really love because I love to be able to stack stuff like that up. Right, so I'm going to put things in order so I understand what I'm doing. And I'm going to move loads of stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to go and run those, um, the black and the white, or should I say the grey and the white, on the flower through my machine and I'll be right back. Okay, I've done that and this is what you end up with. Now, as you can see, because I cut large pieces and actually I suggest you cut smaller pieces so that they're just a little bit bigger than the um, actual die, the letter press die that you're running through. But because these are graphite, which is pencil, you can take your eraser and you can, if you need to tidy up there, just very gently go along with your eraser and you'll remove what you put down. But because I'm now going to run away and um, cut out the design that I've just done, I'm only going to be bothered to concentrate on any bits that might be within that edge there. So I'm going off to cut this out so that we've got the nice shape and I will also do that one and I'll be straight back. Okay, so I've done that and as you can see on this one, um, there's very little really. There's a, maybe a tiny bit there if, if you wanted to be a bit picky and you can just take your eraser and just gently remove that and that's absolutely fine. That's ready to go. You've got a good, good quality impression. And there was nothing on the outsides of cutting that one. So that one's clean and good to go. And just like a pencil, you know, get your markers or your watercolour. If you've cut it in watercolour cardstock, your graphite will go down regardless of the style of uh, cardstock that you're using. And you can just go straight in and colour those. But um, as I said, you know, I've already coloured these in touch five. So I'm going to leave that one untouched. And I think when I come back to Alina next week, I'll make a few of these and pop them onto a card and layer them up. Because now that you've got your outline, you see, you can fussy cut your flower and you can bring your flower up even more dimensionally by layering a few up there. 
I mean, if you cut three of these and stack them and two of those, then you've got this awesome uh, dimensional bunch of flowers. Now, I've called them magnolia. I don't know if they are peonies or magnolia. You can tell me below. <laughs> I don't mind, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what the white graphite looks like with that and I'm going to move the die and just to make sure that you know you get your back piece and you get the lesser pressed die there in that set and of course I'm making a mess as usual. I'm going to stack that under Santa so I know where it is. Right. Now then, I'm going to go in with some pink and some white, and I've got green for the leaves. Now, this stuff does usually make a lovely mess, so I'm going to get a piece of white cardstock. Excuse my throat today. It's, uh, you know, the weather's changed, and when, whenever the weather changes, hot or cold, I always seem to go croaky. Right, I hope that you can see that. If not, I'm going to try and drop my camera there I think that's better yeah that's a good close-up you can see better than me you know <laughs> I've always got the camera in my face right I'm unscrewing the lid of my Perlex powder and of course if you've got the Ranger stuff that would be the uh, perfect pearls and that's this one and you really don't need that much, to be honest, which is why most of us have still got them many, many years later. And you can just take your makeup brush and just run the colour over, just very, very subtle. And we're going to put some white into here as well. See, I, I just went and got a little bit carried away by putting too much on. But these makeup brushes from Dollar Tree are really, really good. I think they're in a bag of um, 10 for a dollar. Just loose ones on their own. And uh, I don't mean to be completely silent, but I'm going to finish putting the pink down in this area and I'll come back to do the green. Okay, let's uh, squish it down. You can just tap it with the edge of your blender and then we can go in and remove it so that you're not like pressing it down in areas where you really don't want it. And you should end up with a really sort of like pretty looking boho piece now the graphite does pick up the um, the mica, so you get the strength of colour most um, onto those lines. So I got carried away there. And all you have to do, if you get carried away, because you're only tapping it on at the moment, is just pick it up and blow it off. Mica isn't toxic, so... Well, not used like this anyway, so you'll be okay. Just don't eat it. Never eat any craft product. That's my motto. No matter how sparkly and shiny, just don't eat it. <laughs> right, I'm just going to blow this. Right. And before I go into squidging around and blending, I've got a little bit of white here. And I can dot a few pearlescent sort of like little highlights around. And as I was saying, it is amazing, you know, sort of how long we've had these powders for. And they sort of like go in and out of fashion and you're always glad you've got them. And I think that I've got um, 40 bottles. I bought a big tray of Perlex when they first launched them. And I was like all excited and, you know, like everybody else, you want every colour under the rainbow. And then it's like 10 years later, <laughs> I'm still looking at them and I've got plenty of them. So now I'm just going to rub that up a bit and that should give it, I hope, a little bit of sparkle in there. It's going to burnish those white graphite lines 
and really bring that color up and I'm going to pick it up in a second just to show you that as you buff it in you start to see it even better because you're sort of like putting a shine onto the surface right tap it and let's have a look at that so we've got some clarity there you go so you've got some really really pretty let's do microscope and see what happens it's just really pearly and shimmery and then of course a white gel pen and you can go in and start to add stronger definition on things like um, getting some white berries finding those lines and just going in with your white gel pen I hope I'm not hiding everything with my hand just trying to see as I go along and you only have to touch your white gel pen down to um, the paper surface really lightly when you press really hard with um, gel pens nothing ever wants to come out and your lines can look really dry and scratchy so you're better off just sort of like tickling along the edges very very gently and if you wanted to you can put you know sort of like light into here just by scratching down some of those lines and um, you can just get totally carried away and of course if you've got metallic markers it's going to look great on black as well and those sparkle markers would look really pretty but you can start to add in your own details and you can get something that looks really really nice so that is the easiest way that's in the white this is in the grey graphite to um, get your impression and see what you're doing for colouring and as I said I did exactly the same thing when I was doing the Santas so that just like this you, you've got a nice outline that you can colour into so that's how the Santas were done right next up I'm going to cut a Santa I'm going to go away and do that I think I'm going to do this one here and I've got to ink it up with um, an embossing pad so let me grab that and I'm going to be straight back okay so I've got my Santa and I've got my piece of cardstock that is going to go on and I think I've measured it correctly and that's the outline that will cut out and that all fits into that little scrap of cardstock there and I'm using Elena Crafts um, embossing pad and that's what I'm going to use so I've just got it here and I don't know if you can see it but the texture of this die when you rub your finger across it is kind of like it's got a silicon or a little bit of a rubbery surface now I'm not sure in fact I'm going to do this I'm going to put the die in and I'm going to press it because I know that I want plenty on. And I'm going to put that up there and I'm going to press that down as well. And hopefully he's all coated. Uh, hold it by the edges. I'm just going to put the lid back onto that. And then I'm going to find the area of my cardstock where I know I'm still going to be able to cut that's what I've got and I'm just going to go off and I'm going to run that through right I hope that we've been lucky enough that the embossing powder just chuck it all out because you can put it all back in is going to stick here so I've put plenty on and if we have a look we can see that it has stuck if you've got one of those um, dust bags don't forget to do it on your cardstock because you know me I'm a little misforgetful so take off any bits that might show up and I'm gonna do that again 
you can see the humidity here in Florida so you get big lumps right I am pretty confident that I have got embossing powder down into there and this is the um, Ranger sticky embossing powder now you can get one by Stampendous uh, which I also have and uh, I think that bottle's about 10 years old as well so I'm just going to put all of this back in before we heat that up and uh, I think I've got a bone folder on my table and we'll see what happens I'm just going to shake all of that back down into the pot and then get the glorious vacuum cleaner out in a minute so I'll pop that back there and I've actually lost my bone folder hang on I'll be back in a minute nope it was here hiding under everything there it is just in case I need it and I'm going to also get a foil sheet out and I've got several colours in here. I don't know if Rangers still do these because, as I said, I got them such an awfully long time ago. Uh, I think I'm going to go with gold. Why not? And I've got silver coming out with the gold. So there we go. Oh, let's pull it all out and then I'll have to put it all back together. So there's a gold piece. And I'll move this out of the way. Now that's likely to fly off when I'm doing my embossing. But we've got the embossing powder on there. I'll just grab my heat gun and turn it on. If it sounds very, very loud on camera, I do apologise. And I've just noticed actually that there's a couple of sheets there. So I'm going to save that one. Right, heat gun is getting hot. I'm going to move my foil. I hope I'm not all blurred. Try and get a good picture. There we go. And of course, whenever you're in boxing, paper is always, always going to curl up on you. Just get it all melted and squishy, and I believe that that is all melted. Yeah. So now, what we have to do is pop this down over the top. And this is why I wanted my um, bone folder. I don't necessarily want to create any big dints or anything into it. I just want it to make contact with that sticky area. Now, I have never, ever done this before. I don't know if it's going to work. But um, I'm pretty sure we're going to find out. It may or it may not. Look at that, I didn't need the, uh, I could have just used my finger. <laughs> it's one of those things we all learn. Oh, well I can see the legs showing up there. Not so much on the body area. I'm just going round and round, I'm going to have a little peek. Ooh, no. But I tell you what, now that I can see the outline, I think what I'm going to do is put the die back on top and send it through. Um, that could either be extremely interesting <laughs> or very bad. I can actually line that up with the feet. See where I've um, I've rubbed through there. I can actually see where his foot is, so I can line it up. So this is an experiment and uh, as you know from experience not everything goes well on this channel. But I'm actually going to run that through and see what happens. I'll be right back. Okay so I did it and obviously you can see the outline in the foil 
but did it actually fall out of Santa? Right, I'll let you be the first ones to see it. Let's see what happened. Did it get down in there and make a good impression? Or is it all sort of like itty bitty? Let's do a close up. There's a little bit of kind of extra there on the leg, but there's no embossing powder. Oh, no. So, although you've got an outline with a little bit of sparkle, it's not as successful as you would want it to be. Now, could they be used for hot foiling? I don't think so, because as I said, they feel like they have a sort of silicon coating on them, almost like a stamp. But what this is good for is it does give you a great outline for which to colour where you've got some sparkly elements coming through. So that could be interesting. But for cold embossing, um, no, it did not work. But I have got a, a very pretty impression in my foil there. So... I don't recommend it for foiling, but I do recommend it for cutting and embossing foil cardstock. And I don't know if I've got that card in my box. If I have, I'll grab it. Right, I found it. So there it is into gold foil cardstock. And I absolutely love that because I love embossed foil anyway. But as a cold emboss, if you're going to do some colouring and you're looking for a bit of sparkle in there, then, yeah, you know, I think you could make that work with little glittery highlights. Um and then, of course, the graphite paper just gives you a brilliant stamped image onto which you can colour. That's absolutely no problem at all. So that's that way. And then, of course, I showed you what it looks like plain so that you can watercolour or get your markers or your pencils or what have you into there. And then we did it on black using the white graphite and the pearlex and a little bit of white gel pen. And I really like this. I think that's, you know, really strong and bold to go onto a card and uh, would look absolutely awesome. Sort of like doing many of them and fussy cutting and layering them up. So that is my tutorial today. So we had one that just doesn't work at all and the others are absolutely wonderful and it means you don't have to get your brayer and your ink out and you haven't got to wash anything so you know it's a nice easy 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 cheaty right so tomorrow I am up with an MX art design team haul and I've got um, a couple of new die designs in that haul that um, I designed for MX Art, so I'm looking forward to that one. And what else have I got? Lots of gnomes I noticed in the box. So let's see what I come up with tomorrow. But I do thank you for joining me today and have an awesome day. As usual, all links below. Bye.